<laughs> no, there isn't. That, that's true. I mean, any more than if you say the word Caucasian, that doesn't, no, that's just an umbrella, you know. Uh, no, there aren't. I, I, I'm into bows and arrows big time since, since when my grandfather taught me. I make my own bows and arrows. I mean, I love bows and arrows. I just bought a Mongolian horse bow you know, just, just to have it, just to, you know, see it from another culture, how they did theirs and so forth. But, but I make my bows and arrows, own bows and arrows. And, and, and I mean, it, it's a special connection when you do that, when you can do that, when you, when you know that the bow that you've made, and they're different kinds. Um, <clears throat> even among the Lakota bows, there's the hunting bow, which is longer, uh, and there's the combat bow or the war, war bow, which is shorter. And then there's, a, then there's a very specialized bow that was used to hunt buffalo. So it was shorter, and it, it, it became shorter after the horse came. Once the horse came, we had to have a bow that could be maneuverable on the back of a horse, so we just shortened them up. Uh, so there's different kinds of bows, even among the Lakota. But when you consider that, and some anthropologist I heard somewhere that they're not sort of grudgingly saying, well, there might have been as many as 2,000 different native tribes in North America when Columbus came. I, I happen to think that myself. I think it was more than, a lot more than 500. Then if that was the case, whether it was 500 or 2,000, there's that many different languages and that many different ways of identifying ourselves. So, you know, we, we look at things, you know, so much differently than everybody else. So, so uh, you know, there's that many different ways to make bows and arrows. And, and, and that variety is still here. I mean, we, you know, there's a pan-Indianness now because, uh, you know, in the last century, certainly within the last 75 years, We've had much more contact with one another as, as different diverse tribes all over the country. So uh, some of us are copying the, the, the dance costumes of tribes elsewhere, and, and you know the Northern Plains tribes are copying this, and then the other people down there are copying our songs and our costumes and our way of doing. Well, that's the pan Indianness, but the variety is still there. I mean, we will have our own way of even different ways we dance, uh, and our songs are different. And, and, and generally, you know, our, our perception of our, our environment is different because we all come from different parts of this continent. Uh, the people who lived in the East were all sedentary hunters and gatherers. They stayed in one place. Whereas those of us on the plains were all nomadic. We moved around to follow the game. And the people in the Southwest learned how to irrigate because water was a scarce commodity. And for heaven's sakes, the people on the northwest coast went out in the ocean and chased whales and skinned boats. So all that variety is there, and that variety was sort of directly influenced by the environment itself. And that gets back to the earlier question of how we related to the earth. It, it made us who we are. And that's really the source of our, our, our variety. And, and, and we can be resilient. I mean, I, I make bows and arrows, and one of the things that as I said, one of the things that impressed me about a well-made bow is how resilient it can be time after time after time. You bend that sucker back and you pull and the arrow flies and, and you're thinking, well, if I pull it back too far, it's going to break. But then you rely on what you've been taught as a bow maker, what your grandfather said. Okay, first of all, he said, it's got to look like the new moon, the thin sliver of a new moon. That's the shape of our Lakota bows. And if you look at it, the next time you have that opportunity, look at the brand new moon. It's just thin in the sky. It's thickest in the middle and tapers gracefully out to both ends. That's what our bows look like. Interestingly enough, that shape enables it to be resilient because it, it withstands the stress of being drawn over the whole amount, both limbs, top and bottom. If you make it too thick in the middle, then it puts, puts too much pressure on the outer limbs and it'll break. But if you use that shape, it gives them that ability to be resilient time after time after time. And we can be the same way if we, if we, we can stop to think about it. And part of our, our resiliency is, is, is all the ways that we're different, that variety, even among our own self. You know, the Lakota are different than the Nakota, the Nakota and the Dakota. They, they chose to stay on the east side of the river. We went west and scattered ourselves all over the place. 
Bread is a good thing. 